Hello, well now we are back with you again, uh, myself Maureen Rowland Aitken and the Venerable Michelle Pillay and we are in conversation and we are reflecting on Rahab's story. Yes indeed we are and perhaps we can begin Maureen by just looking and seeing which part of the story really touched us and affected us. Yes for me um, I think Given the current situation where mm -hmm. there is a lot of fear, um, we, know, we know God um, and we know that God is always there for us. But to look at Rahab as she was, mm -hmm. a prostitute, she told lies, and yet she, all of that was forgiven in the sight of God. Mm. It's very interesting because in some passages, we are told that, yes, the name is used, uh, a prostitute, but in some writers, like Josephus, in fact, calls her an innkeeper, which for me was very, very interesting, and I don't know if that was soft-soaping. Yes, perhaps he was being kind. Perhaps he was being <laughs> kind. But I think what for me is very interesting is those things were irrelevant. Mm. Then also what fascinated me is that she was seen as, as dispensable because her home, her inn, whatever it was, mm. was actually built into the wall of the city. Mm. So it means that they would have been on the first line of fire. And yet, and yet she was willing to think independently, make a decision which was not the greater city's decision, think for herself, make a decision, stick with it. Yes, there were lies, but the lie was almost incidental again it was more about the choice she made to shift her allegiance and put her life on the line i, I love that little red cloth yes. that she had to tie because she didn't know she didn't know these men she assumed they were trustworthy or she just trusted god, god. so much that she was willing to take the chance and put her life and her family's life by saying, I invest in it, irrespective of the outcome. Do you think that rather like the woman at the well, who we know was ostracized by mm. the people she lived with, do you think the fact that her house was built into the city gate meant that, that Rahab was perhaps ostracized by her people to an extent? I'm not sure. I, I suppose could it be? Mm. Who knows? It could be part of it. I mean, for me, it, it goes back to the whole thing of God's forgiveness. Um, yes, of course, we are called to live a certain kind of life, and that's mm -hmm. important. But again, I just think in these dark days that we're going through at the moment, mm -hmm. um, it's very easy to feel that there are times when you've let God down mm -hmm. and to think, why am I so important in all of this? And yet to God, each one of us is important. Mm -hmm. And uh, we know him as the shepherd of the flock, and we know that he will not allow one of the sheep to stray. Mm -hmm. and, and perhaps, as you were talking about how we may be feeling, given the context globally, mm -hmm. perhaps one of the images that for me was really striking was the men climbing on the rope down, the mm -hmm. two spies who were mm -hmm. leaving the city, knowing that in that time they're exposed, they're right against the wall. Anybody could see them. Yes, uh, yes it naturally was night, so that did help, but there were guards patrolling yeah. the wall. And, and there must have been moments where they were literally clinging to the rope, waiting for the guard to go past. Maybe they even slipped as they were climbing down. And there's this profound sense that sometimes that's all we feel we're doing mm -hmm. is being very naked in the face of who knows what mm -hmm. and clinging to this very insecure rope, very fragile place and very mm -hmm. vulnerable, perhaps. Absolutely. Um, I think in any kind of adversity, there is that moment. Mm -hmm. um, we would call it a, a Kairos moment where mm -hmm. we don't really, you know, it's, it's, it's between two poles really, one mm, of being mm. positive and one of feeling negative. Mm, mm. And we need, we need to remember that God is near, that God is with us at all times. Mm. 
and perhaps not in the way we expect. Yeah, true. Because those two men running for their lives, surely they didn't expect a prostitute to be helping them, and yet she was God's protection in that time. Uh, but, maybe that's also part of it, isn't it, Maureen, that we mustn't look for God only in the expected places, but also in the so-called unacceptable places, the accidental places. Don't you, don't you think, sorry, don't you think that was part of um, Rahab's incarnation? Mm. You know, mm. she didn't just, I don't know, my feeling is that something was happening in her life, mm. and then this opportunity came along to um, demonstrate her faith, mm, mm. if you know what I mean. Mm, mm. Um, so mm. God was already working in her life, despite the life that, um, I'm not talking about her as a prostitute, but we are told uh, that she grew up um, in basically a pagan household. Yes. Um, yes. And yet all of a sudden she did this 360 degree turn mm. and became mm. a woman of faith. Mm. I think mm. it happened before the spies came, mm -hmm. and I think mm -hmm. the spies were an opportunity for her to demonstrate her faith. Yes, yes. So maybe we can close by saying, what is the opportunity that God is giving to each of us mm -hmm. to demonstrate faith? And the demonstration needn't be dramatic or hugely traumatic either. Mm -hmm. It simply can be that opportunity no matter small or great is a measurement which is irrelevant because how we use any opportunity can show a measure of faith thank you maureen thank so you. wonderful to be together and thank you to everybody for joining us today thank you have, have a, a wonderful day, day.